In him, I realize that I am transcendent. Ooh, that's a big fancy word. I am transcendent. But she said, what's, what's transcendent mean? It means this. We've got the definition up on the screen. It means existence beyond the normal or physical level. This is what a Christian is. A Christian is not somebody that goes to church. A Christian is not somebody that just does nice things for nice people or other people. A Christian is a transcendent being. You are above the level of normal and physical. That you've come to realize that this is not all that there is. And you gotta wake up to this reality or else you'll get obsessed with temporal shifting sands of culture. And you can't root your identity in something that changes. Because if it changes, that means you got to as well. Jesus, this is eternal life. John 17, three. This is eternal life that they may know you, that they will know the only true God. And then he says, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Can you write this down in your notes? Eternal life is not about quantity. It's about quality. How are you living? And Jesus came to give you a different kind of life, like a life that matters, a life that's above the physical and the normal level of our world. So how do we get there? In John 17, 3, he defines eternal transcendent life. A transcendent life happens when I experience God, when I experience God. So Jesus prays, this is eternal life that they will know you. And the word know is, yeah, it's kind of a deceiving word in English. The Greek word is gnosko. And the word gnosko, the Greek word here for knowledge is not information. It's not just you know about God, you've heard of God, you believe there is a God. The word is defined as knowledge through experience. Here's what I'm talking about with God. Other people can tell you about God. Other people can describe God. You could have been raised in a family that believed in God or maybe denied the existence of God. I'm happy you're here, but listen to me. Nobody can truly give you the experience of God other than the Lord Jesus Christ who came from God. This is why, again, you don't wanna to listen to culture about this stuff because culture likes to deny this exists especially in our higher education department. You're gonna to go to college and they're gonna tell you about a guy by the name of Abraham Maslow. And Abraham Maslow in 1946 developed something called the hierarchy of human needs and Maslow basically proposed that humans were a bunch of needs. Lower level needs, medium level needs, upper medium level needs, highest need. And so I wanna put the, the triangle that he came up with. It's called Maslow's triangle of human or hierarchy of human needs. And basically he, ba he says at the bottom level you've got physiological needs, that's like food, water, clothes, Clothing. Then you need safety, like on top of those needs. After you get safety, you need love and belonging. You need somebody to love you and you need sexual intimacy. Then he says the self-esteem. This is where we get participation trophies from, right here. Okay, you need self-esteem, confidence, achievement, or respect of others. And then after you get all of those first four needs, then you can finally do what he says, self-actualize. You can become the fullness of who you are. And when you go to college, teenagers, listen, please, I'm doing you a favor. When you go to college, they're gonna show you that pyramid. They're gonna tell you that's, that's what he came up with. And they're not going to tell you the truth because Abraham Maslow developed that hierarchy of human needs in 1946. And 30 years later, he came up with a stunning conclusion. And he wrote another book called The Farthest Reaches of Human Nature. And in that book, he says, I was wrong. He says, self-actualization is not enough for humanity. Humanity needs an experience with something beyond itself. Do you know what word he used to describe it? Transcendence. You're made for transcendence. And for a hundred years in this country, the church denied the spiritual to its own detriment. To its own detriment, because they thought, oh, people can't believe in the supernatural anymore, so let's not talk about the supernatural. Let's just talk about the good morality that Jesus has come to. And how many know good morality is fine, but you need something more than just being a good person? You need an experience with the living, transcendent God who formed you, who loved you, and he gave his son to die for you so that you can experience him, not just do good things.